So Gina, why did the tomato turn red? Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. <laughs> that took a few minutes on that one. It did take a minute. I to got one of... more. Okay. What do you call an alligator in a vest? What do you call an alligator in a vest? I don't know. An investigator. <laughs> Two good laughs on that That's one. That's pretty clever. Those are those. Oh, yeah. Those are kind of newer jokes that I hadn't heard before. I, when you said about why does the tomato turn red, I was thinking, well, it turns red because <laughs> Naturally, it, the hell? it was on the vine and it was green and photosynthesis. and <laughs> So I was, that's why it kind of took me a minute with that joke. It's Gina. And Don. With Tuesday Tips. Today, Encourage unstructured playtime, spontaneity, and social interaction while allowing kids to also value solitude and the enjoyment of their own company. This is taken from an article by Marlena Donato in the National Awakening, Natural Awakenings magazine, uh, the August 2022 edition. And that's something that I've talked about and said for years with raising children and looking into the world of homeschooling and unschooling and how important it is developmentally as an occupational therapist my professional understanding and experience that kids need time to be bored <laughs> because in that boredom mind. springs creativity mm -hmm. and things can be so structured especially in the 21st century um <laughs> I had to think of what century it was going from school to structured activities that kids don't well, and filling up their day with them too often you know? don't and and you want you know you're working and they need to you need to have a safe place for them to be right mm -hmm. so there's reasons for a lot of this and yet they need downtime they need mm -hmm. time that and it might look like staring in front of the television but they need downtime to do those things and if our kids are disappearing like that we need to step back and say you know, are they zoning out because they feel so overwhelmed yeah. and they don't have that opportunity to have downtime. They're expected to be productive all the time. They should be working on their homework or if they're in music or a sport or their volunteer opportunities or whatever they have going on. Well, it actually works against them, too, if they're overwhelmed and shut down or zoned out. It's working against them. They're not learning what you know the things that, that you're expecting them to learn from these things are you know like if they're playing soccer they they may not be playing as efficiently if they just don't have time to be able to uh, i don't know if it's cause if it's causing stress in right words. you think about you know it's one of those times where think about as an adult and healthy coping strategies and if you get overwhelmed and stressed at work you know what do you do you take a vacation you call in sick you have a sick day or maybe you just keep going and stress yourself out until something happens to you with your physical health. Or So as adults, when we're thinking about healthy ways of handling things, we give ourselves permission, have secret pleasures. Mm -hmm. You know, we hide the chocolate and when no one's looking, we do this or we have <laughs> something. Oh yeah, chocolate. And as adults, we have the ability, we can drive, we can make responsible decisions, we have so much choice. And kids don't have that. Yeah. They don't have the freedom to just they disappear. They, they cut school and, and they get in big kinds of trouble. And yet, we can call in sick when we just, if we work a job, not everybody can do that. Because we're just overwhelmed. Yeah. I used to say, you know, when I would get burned out and overwhelmed, I would physically wind up with an illness a physical that put me calling in sick. And over time, I realized I need to take mental health days so that I could have a day before I got to that point that I had bronchitis or um, I used to get sinus infections recurrently, that point where I was so physically sick that I couldn't work. But emotional health is just as important and, and having that time. And so thinking about those kind of things with our kids and their actions and their behaviors because there's so many double standards that we set for kids that things that we expect them to do the ways we expect them to respond to us that we wouldn't ask of a co-worker a friend another adult yeah well when you're talking about play you know there's 
there's uh, there's actually therapy called floor play, which is you know getting down and and I think getting on the floor and and doing different activities with them. There's you know there's uh, schools and therapies that that are, uh, nature, you know. In other words, letting kids do things a little differently too. That, we learn through play. Yeah. We learn through play from babies, and that really continues. You don't hit a certain age, oh, you're five now. Now we learn through sitting down and doing a notebook. No. Even as adults, we learn through play. And play is really defined as engaging in something new and creative for the first time. When you think about, as adults, we want to keep our brains um, we're, Active? We're, yes, if we're concerned about losing our memory and not being able to <laughs> come up with words, doing puzzles and things to engage our mind. Mm -hmm. And so, but doing something new is really what helps engage it. So doing a new type of puzzle, doing something a little different, because doing the same one over and over again is not have the same impact. So like unstructured play you know, following a game and following the rules is one type of play, but real unstructured play is having materials and letting them decide what they're doing with it. Not like, okay, I want you to make this, you know, pretty little picture and put the sticks here and do it this way, giving them the freedom to make the choices. Well, it just, it, it makes me think about when I was a kid, we had a swing set in the backyard and it, and it was on the top of a hill. And my friend Mike and I, Talk about creative, it, playing the same game, but being, but every time it was a new adventure because what we would do is we'd start swinging and we'd take turns uh, each time. And whoever, whoever's day it was would decide. Now, this we'd be swinging and we'd jump off. And as we jumped off and before we hit the ground, the person had to yell out where we were, where we were going, what was the adventure. They had to, you know, we're going outer space, and this, you know, and then of course when we got onto the ground, they would say, and this is what we're going to do. So it was it was new every time in a way because it was. Do you remember if that was your idea, or your friend's idea, or I don't, the swing set was just a big thing for us. And but I mean, just that's really powerful. Like when we jump I, off the probably, swing, we're, I would say it was probably Mike because he was just this entering. I mean, that reminds me of the Magic Treehouse books, and they you know traveled to different places and oh, the different adventures. All, I mean, and, and I want to add, you know, we think about our childhood. Yours in the '60s and '70s, mine in the '70s and '80s, and. There was more opportunity for unstructured play. There mm -hmm. was more often that you let your kids just be outside and playing. And there's people that live in areas where they can still promote that and encourage that or who choose lifestyles to allow for that. And I want to invite you instead of going, oh, my kid's always on the computer. They don't do that. I need to take it away so that they can have their unstructured time. And I want to do a little twist because the world is different now. We can't expect kids to have the same experiences we did because they're living in a different world than we are. And their unstructured time, yes, it's great to get outside and move our bodies and that those things are important. And having unstructured time that looks like building something on Minecraft and collaborating with other kids and creating a world, there's a lot of that there and the value in these technology and these tools that are out there. I mean, think about when COVID happened and people were shut down and isolated and blocked off. Those technologies allowed Lotus to kids continue. who were already connecting that way just continued it. And so there's a blessing in some of these technologies and it is part of the world. Now, I like to say we add to rather than saying, no, you shouldn't be on the screen too much. It's no, in addition to having your screen time, Let's have outside time mm -hmm. once a week. Let's go on a new adventure once a week. Let's get outside and do different things. Ride a bike, uh, you know. And I just want to invite you to rethink about that because there's so much creativity. It's like even watching a TV show. You can be passively be watching a TV show, but some shows are so complex that it's really not a passive experience. No. Uh, the TV shows that are, especially our middle child watches, and you have to know what's going on and pay attention to all the moving components, um, that there's a lot of activity going on in that, just like some of these games out there that, and if, if they're having to collaborate with other people, if there's team building games, there's a lot of 
that can be kind of a free play kind of experience to allow for that spontaneity and be able to practice those skills in those settings. So I just invite you to step back and look at those things that way. And, and just that thought of adding to what your kids are doing rather than saying, you know, okay, we, you're on the screen too much. We're only going to have two hours of screen time a day or whatever you set it at. That's setting a limit. That's telling them they can't, they're not allowed to versus how about once a week we go somewhere and every, you know, every week someone picks where we're going or what we're doing, whether it's roller skating or taking a walk somewhere or some physical kind of activity, um, inviting those other things into your life and really thinking about, okay, how much in everybody's different with what they need. Like we have a kid who really thrived on structure and some kids, they need even more Mm -hmm. downtime than others so invites you to think about that with yourself giving yourself that time mm -hmm. and your kids that time adult play time <laughs> yes unstructured spontaneity so that's our tip for today uh, we hope you've enjoyed it and get something out of it uh, you can find out more about gina and i and our, our programs and our workshops and things at focushealthyfamily.com join us on thursdays for our full-length podcast where we discuss a discuss a whole variety of topics and learn more about us at our Facebook page, our website. And remember, how you talk to your kids today shapes their future and yours.